Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. We're going to be talking about decarbonating soft drink. Um, a very exciting um, prac that we're going to be dealing with here, but it illustrates an important principle um, to do with equilibrium, carbon dioxide, and Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so in this particular activity, so all right, so let's imagine that we're taking our typical kind of can of soft drink. Okay, it's got the opening at the top. Okay. Um, what we're doing in this situation is that we're trying to um, remove the CO2 okay, from the actual the can to be able to work out how much carbon dioxide is there in that can of soft drink. I know, again, very riveting, but nevertheless, we need to do it. So, um, in this situation, what we experience, so let's say you open up that can. There it is, um, that wonderful you know, sound of refreshment that they like to put in the ads all the time. Um, okay, remember that when we're talking about this equilibrium, okay, that we're talking about gaseous carbon dioxide in equilibrium with the aqueous or dissolved carbon dioxide, okay, and remember um, that we're saying then plus energy, okay, that it's a delta H is negative, okay, so that we can put that on that side of the equation, okay. So, what we're doing, as soon as we open that can, we hear that, that hiss, All the, there's a certain amount of gas carbon dioxide that's kind of trapped at the top of that can um, that then all of a sudden escapes. Okay, so if we, let's say we had, sixteen. let's represent with, you know, lots of dissolved carbon dioxide, and then... Okay, and then some gas carbon dioxide. Okay, let's let's take this out even further. All right, so we've got nine gas carbon dioxide, and then uh, we've got twenty dissolved carbon dioxide over here. All right, to re represent that we've got more dissolved than we do as gas. Okay, so what's happening as soon as you open that and you hear that hiss? Shh, all that gas carbon dioxide has been released. The system is now it's not closed anymore. It's open. And so what that means is that that gas has escaped. So we're going to get a shift, and we're going to get a shift to the to the left-hand side to try and replace some of that carbon dioxide that's been lost. Okay, so we're going to take some of this and put it over here. You know, so we're going to, we're trying to partially counteract that change because you know as predicted by Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, now exactly which ones we take out, you know, is essentially random. Okay. And so it's shifting, but then remember that that can is still open, or that bottle is still open. So even though we're creating more carbon dioxide gas, it's still able to escape. Okay, so it keeps getting lost. Okay, and then this process continues. We keep making more, you know, one by one, more and more and more. Okay, but then because the system is open, again, we keep losing more. Now, if the system wasn't open, what would happen? So say like you've got yeah, a bottle of soft drink. You open it up, shh, it fizzes, and then it's open for a moment, that gas has escaped, and then you close it again. Okay? So you, what would happen is that some of this carbon dioxide that's dissolved would be, go to become a gas, and then once we've re-established equilibrium, it would stop. The soft drink itself would be slightly flatter than it was before, but you would get to the, you'd re-establish an equilibrium. It wouldn't go permanently flat. Okay, but you know that if you take that bottle of coke and you leave it open in the air for long enough, it will go completely flat, regardless of what you do. Okay, if it's open. Okay, so what we're doing here is that we're trying to um, force this process to happen. We're using Le Chatelier's principle by, by decreasing the amount of gas carbon dioxide to remove it from the, the soft drink. And then what we can do is that we can measure the mass before and after. You know, so we can do mass before... mass after, you know, and so then we can work out then the mass of CO2, okay? Now the reason that we want to do that is that one of the next things we're going to, next videos we're going to go through is that we can look at what volume of carbon dioxide has been produced using something called the molar volume of the gas, okay? So that we can actually look at, all right, well how many mils of carbon dioxide gas should we get out of a, a bottle of soft drink? You know, if we could actually trap all of that escaping carbon dioxide somewhere else and, and measure how much that would be, 
you know, what sort of volumes are we talking about? Um, okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.